go. This is a 12 incher. I wasn't sure if it was 10 or 12 when I first got it. This is a 12. Hey guys, welcome to the next installment of the classic vintage black and white TV restoration series. Here we are back in the garage. Pick it up exactly where we left off. Different t-shirt though. So it's the next day. Actually the next evening. I'm taking advantage of my wife having taken the car out so I can be in the garage for the moment. It's also still warm. And yeah, I am a classic Midwesterner. I am wearing shorts in December. Hey, it's 50 degrees. Why not? Okay, so we are going to pull out the chassis now. This should be all we need. A socket uh, ratchet. We just need to figure out the right size for the bolts. And a quarter inch nut driver. This will become your best friend if you work on vintage electronics. So like 90 plus percent of the screws, especially on 40s, 50s TVs you will encounter, will be quarter inch. Okay, so, uh, since we last left off, I packed it away a bit. So, let's get it back out. Now, as one of you did remind me, I did not mention the knobs. Yes, before you can pull the chassis you have to get the knobs off the front. Otherwise, as this happened to be, I forget, I pull the chassis out and you hear the clattering as all the knobs fall off. One of you mentioned, hey, there might be a little screw, a little set screw. Not impossible, but very unusual. I recently did a Scott 6011 projection set that did have set screws, but that's the only one I can think of I've ever encountered that had set screws. So what I'm gonna do is pull this out a bit and yeah. It's heavy. A little bit impossible. Uh, probably weighs 75, 80 pounds. Okay, knobs. Let's take a closer look at them. I should have mentioned too when you're buying an early set, ideally you get all the knobs. In this case, yes, they are all present, but I can tell you there's immediately a problem with them. They should all be brass plated. The plating is worn off from years of use. The base metal of something, some tin alloy, something like that. It would have been brass plated and they clear coated with lacquer. The lacquer wore off. The brass wore off down to bare metal, which means this thing must have seen a lot of use. Otherwise, this is correct. Admiral TVs have this classic waffle pattern knob. The inner part is plastic or big lights. And then we have this. Ah, but here's another a little secret of the Admiral TV restorers. Notice what happened. Yeah, the brass is actually a cap that fits over the plastic. And if you're ever in a situation where the brass looks really crummy, if you pop this off, you will find a plastic knob underneath that's usually pretty darn pristine, and they did sell sets that just had plastic on plastic. So if you're if some of them are missing or in horrible shape, just go with that. Now in this case, there's a little bit of a mismatch. They did make two colors of knobs, milk chocolate and dark chocolate, I call them, and this is not the greatest match. So <laughs> we'll deal with that. That's the least of our concerns right now. But, just so you know, this is what the knobs look like. This one is often broken off. It's just a channel. It has a tail on it. For people cranking on it, they can snap off. These sets are common enough. It's not that hard to get the knobs. And as far as pulling the knobs off, they also tend to come off easy. There's more and more reasons why I like these sets. Brass shafts, plastic knobs, they don't corrode and stick together or seize up or anything. I've never had any trouble getting these off other than the outer metal jacket coming off. Originally they all had felt behind them. This has some of the original felts. Also it's hard to see, it's a little faint but there are decals here. Years ago I teamed up with Phil Nelson and we had some reproduction decals made for Admiral TVs of this style. They are still available from radio days I think or renovated radios. I, I forget exactly where I'll try to include a link, but you can get reproduction decals for the set. Alright, that is all you need to do on the front. Uh, put all your knobs <laughs> safely to the side and try not to drop them like I just did. I'm going to spin this around and we'll take a look at the rest. Hey, I'm missing one felt. The rest are there. 
Not too bad. Okay, getting the chassis out now. I need to find a socket the right size. A little basic kit like this is all you need. And really, even this, you're only going to ever encounter maybe four different sizes. 3 eighths, 5 sixteenths, quarter inch, 7 30 seconds maybe. Uh, 11 30 seconds. I think that's going to be it. Uh, kind of fits a little tight. Let's try 3 eighths. That three A's, there we go, three A's. Anybody got their money on three A's? You win. Alright. That. I'm not even gonna bother with the ratchet, I'm just using a little right angle or er, a tool that's uh, hinged on the end with a little extender, give you a little bit of leverage. I don't think these are on very tight. Very tighty lefty loosey. Right, one. Get it going and then they be really easy to just get out with the fingers. There's one. Sometimes it's a fender washer, sometimes not. I'm pretty sure that is an original nut or bolt. This one has a fender washer on it. They should, because without a big washer, the head of the bolt just digs into the plywood. Just let every set you're ever going to encounter has been worked on. They never put all the screws and nuts and washers back. That's what I'm talking about. It should have a big washer like this, a little locking washer, and then the bolt. So that's two. Three. Hey, wow, all four are there. I am shocked. That also means there's a better chance of the, it hasn't had much work done to it. Not surprisingly, the ones up front are harder to get at. So you really need to get down and get in there. Okay, last bolt coming out. It also has the washer. Hey, you know what? All four washers are this. One was stuck to the bottom of the wood. Amazing. This might be a first. Every single bit of hardware so far has been present. Wow. Okay, before we can yank this out, we need to disconnect this guy. Big old plug. And let's just go ahead and feed it through this little slot. This piece of wood. This piece of wood here is to space here to keep it away from the wall to prevent any chance of you whacking anything and allow for ventilation. Okay, before you go pulling this out, a couple of things to check for. One, some of these have an antenna built into the top and there may be some twin lead coming down and attaching to this somewhere. These are the antenna terminals. You want to disconnect that. 
Two, we have a split chassis. The audio lamp is on the bottom, the speaker's down there. There is a cable connecting these two. It's up at the front. I reach in there, reach around for the cable. There's going to be, well, we also have the power cord. Let's get that. There's going to be a cable up here. Going down to the lower chassis. Somewhere. It's on the other side. No, I think it's on this side. Well, it's already been disconnected. Ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it pulls out of the lower chassis. Yep. There we go. RCA cable. Now, well, to gingerly start to pull this back. There will often be hung up on some stuff. There's a metal screw down here. You get hung up on the edge of that. It's been sitting here for decades. They could be kind of, there's some rubber shock mount blocks. They could be kind of fused together. Let's give it a try. Ah, piece of cake. Oh, I'm making this too easy. As I mentioned, this is just some steel and there's nothing on the other side. When you put your fingers or hands under here, it's going to dig right into the flesh of your hand. If you're not used to this and the weight that you're going to be experiencing, get some gloves, get two people. Do not drop it. Do not drop it. Or as a safe place to hang on to, you might think grab this. Yes, if all the screws are present. I can actually see these are not originals, but at least they're here. Often these are only held on by one or two screws. Don't grab that. Don't grab this. Don't grab the CRT neck. Basically, don't grab anything up here. You have to go underneath. And don't put your fingers up underneath the chassis because there's a coil right here, for example. There's wires, there's delicate stuff. Just keep it near the corners, keep it on the edge. Now I'm hung up on that screen. Let's see why it's getting hung up as soon as I get this out. Okay. Now, it's just balanced enough that it's still in there. I need to figure out where I'm going to put this. Back off the camera a little bit. All right. Grab. Grab some 2 by 4s I don't want to set this down. It's a rainy day. The concrete's a little wet in the garage. Put this in something nice. Take off the cement. Here we go. This is a 12 incher. I wasn't sure if it was 10 or 12 when I first got it. This is a 12. And it's not much clearance, so it may bang against the top of this cabinet a little bit. Be aware of that. There she is. Remember I mentioned about the different revisions and the orange stamp you might see? This has a D on it right there. This is a D revision. A D on the focus coil. And here is that strap I was talking about that slipped down. Somebody commented, why'd you transport it with the strap slipped off? Or why'd you put it on its side? I didn't notice it slipped off. I didn't check. In my haste to get the set and get home, I didn't check. So the way this works is it's a canvas strap that goes down and it's attached to either side. Two quarter inch screws, you can loosen those up and the strap becomes loose and you can tighten it back down with that. This is loose enough, I'm just going to get it back up. Underneath this are rubber shock mounts. I'm sure those have shrunk over time, which allowed this band to loosen up and come off. Still kind of loose, but it's a lot better than nothing. So what's left in the cabinet? Here's what's left inside the cabinet. This is that screen I was getting hung up on. Of perforated metal attached on top. It has an edge when you're sliding the chassis out and get hung up on the edge of that. Oh, and they're missing because if it's not there, potentially you could do some servicing underneath without pulling the chassis out. Here's that. Audio cable that was just going down through a notch up front. And now we can check better for any rodent activity. 
Something else you want to check for when you're picking up a set or considering buying a set is look for not just corrosion but animal droppings and not on wires. Chewed up wood, wood bore beetle damage to the cabinet, termite damage to the cabinet. This is what you want. This is about as good as it gets. The finish could be a little bit nicer, but it's all here. It's nothing been chewed away, nothing broken away, nothing chipped off, nothing broken off. A little bit of funkiness in, oh, I see there, there's, <laughs> there's uh, bits of the, um, there's some black fibers up front. That's just part of the shaft. You can see it way up there. That's part of the or part, rather, it's part of that strap that uh, wore away. Okay, before I pull out the bottom chassis, let's tip this and take a quick peek underneath. I'm sure you're all dying to see what we have to work with. You can also get a better shot of the top side. It's all here. All the tubes are there, all the parts are there, no corrosion. This is fantastic. Now before you tip a chassis on its side, with the CRT attached to it, make sure it's secure. The strap is is on there well enough. It's not going anywhere. I would also suggest you tip it this way because this is also firmly attached. When I put it on its side, this gives it something to rest on. If I go the other way, there's not much there. It could just roll over. So, we're going to turn it around. <laughs> You'll also see that there are some small handholds you can use underneath to give your fingers a little bit of a break. And those are the L brackets where the bolt attached to. But you can see if you reached under here, there's parts right here. You could easily jam your fingers right into this power resistor and bust it off. All right, this is fantabulous. This may be 100% original. If any bit work has been done to this, very, very, very little. I am stopping right now to take reference photos. I strongly recommend you take photos at every step of the way or make a video like I'm doing. Not just so you can see how everything was before you do anything, but so you know how to put it back together. All right, there are some interesting design elements, engineering elements. We'll talk about that when we get it inside. Right now, let's get the other chassis out. That, we have two options. Take just the chassis out or take the board out. I'm going to take the board out, which means big flat-bladed screwdriver from the top. Why? Basics, it's easier to get at. I only have sort of a dinky screwdriver handy, but if these are loose, it should be big enough. Yeah, oh yeah, those are really loose. Similar deal, you get going a couple turns and then you can use your fingers. The rest of the way, boy, that one's really loose. Makes me think whatever these are going into, not uh, very secure. I believe this board is just a solid piece of plywood. So we aren't going to see much when we get this out. Just like the chassis bolts, a little lock washer and then a bigger fender washer, they call them. Now, I think you guys are going to get kicked out of the speaker. This has a field coil speaker in it. This thing is really, really well engineered. But it also means if the speaker is damaged, it's a little bit more of a challenge to replace. Let's see, that screws here. Huh. Yes, but <laughs> this one was sticking up half an inch. It wasn't really going to anything. Same on this guy. So yeah, it's, somebody was in here doing something. I didn't do that. So we can just start sliding this out. We have to lift it up a little bit. 
Uh, be careful because the speaker is attached. I think. Yes. Speaker plugs in. A little four prime speaker. This is going to be a little heavy because we got a bunch of iron, but. Comes right out. We have some maple tree propellers, but otherwise, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good from the bottom too. Some, ooh, <laughs> some spider cocoons and a couple live spiders. It'll be all right. It's not a brown recluse or black widow. All right, there, there she is. That is one beefy power supply. This weighs as much as some. <laughs> TVs like a seven inch Motorola. Okay, that's it. We can bring these two inside. The speaker. I'll give you a peek at it, but I'm gonna leave it out here for now. Most sets from this era would have a permanent magnet speaker, but this has a very well engineered beefy power supply and they needed two filter chokes, so they went with a field coil speaker. Later models have a permanent magnet speaker. But there it is. Looks to be in good shape. Fingers crossed that the field coil is not open. See some debris. Now we can see the label finally. It's a model 30C15 S. I think the S is the cabinet style. 12 LP4 CRT. And yes, there is a matching phonograph and a matching radio console. They rarely come up for sale, but originally you could buy it. It'd be three cabinets about this size and they would all connect together and make your home entertainment system. I do not have any, I've never had any. I've just found this thing, the uh, individual TVs. I've seen a couple for sale over the years. They're pretty scarce. Okay, so. We're going to take these two chassis onto the workbench and we're going to leave the cabinet out here for now. Oh, one last thought. Empty cabinet, 15 pounds maybe, 20 tops, weighs surprisingly little. So if we do want to refinish it, it's pretty easy to move around. That, I don't know. These are not gouges in the wood. I think that's on the surface of the wood. A little bit of ultra-fine steel wool, sandpaper a little bit, very carefully. I think a lot of this will come off. Top, yeah, it's pretty rough. But light sanding and it's clear coated with some fresh lacquer. It'll probably look a whole lot better. We'll get to that much later. For now, let's bring these inside. I need to clear off my workbench so for the time being I have the chassis over here and just like outside I put some wood boards underneath the chassis and I don't usually get it off off the floor but when I do go to pick it up I can get my fingers underneath it more easily. I'm going to leave off here. If you've made it this far with your project, pat yourself on the back. Getting the set safely home and getting the chassis safely out of the cabinet and inside is a big milestone. It appears they are both in excellent, unmolested, untinkered with condition. Now comes a little research. I don't want to start diving into this without some good service info. So in the next installment, we're going to talk about how to identify the exact model you have, the exact chassis you have, and where you can get service info. And then we're going to take a brief look at the schematic and try to match up what we see in the schematic with what we see on the chassis. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.